Welcome to one more demystifying technology video. And today you're going to learn everything about Cypher Suites and secure HTTPS connections. When a client wants to connect to a server over HTTPS, they're going to use a protocol called SSL or TLS. TLS is basically a more secure version of SSL. So basically in the past you had SSL version two, SSL version three, and then after that came TLS version one, TLS 1.1, TLS 1.2, and then more recently in 2018, TLS 1.3. And some people might think that it doesn't matter if the connection is SSL or TLS, but it does matter because like I said, TLS is more secure. Before we understand what Cypher suites are, let's understand how data is sent from the client to the server. So imagine that the client wants to send 19 bytes of data. The client is not actually gonna send the entire data at once, and what's going to happen is that the data is going to be broken down into blocks. The size of the block is actually going to depend on the cipher being used. If you're using, for example, triple DES, then that means the block size is going to be 8 bytes or 64 bits. But if you're using AES 128, then the blocks are going to be 16 bytes or 128 bits. And one thing here to note is that the data had 19 bytes, but we actually split into three equal eight bytes blocks. I mean, eight times three is 24, not 19. And that's why you see these zeros at the end here, which is the padding. Some ciphers are gonna require padding because they want the blocks to have the same size. And here I put zeros at the end, but not necessarily it's gonna be zeros. Now that the data has been broken into smaller chunks, each chunk is gonna be encrypted separately. So here at the top, you've got a plain text, and what's going to happen is that the plain text is going to be encrypted with a symmetric key. And once it's encrypted, that's going to generate a cipher text. When the server receives the cipher text, it's just going to use the same symmetric key. It's going to decrypt the cipher text and that's going to generate the plain text for the server. Looking at all this seems simple, but there are a couple of questions that we need to answer. For example, if the client and the server, they use the same symmetric key, how do they agree on this key? Or how do they agree on the cipher that is going to be used to encrypt the data? And also, how does the client know that it's talking to the right server? And the answer for all these questions is the cipher suite. Let's go to the terminal and understand more about cipher suites. First thing I'm going to do is to connect to linkedin.com over HTTPS. And I'm going to check which cipher suite has been chosen between my client or my computer and LinkedIn server. So I'm going to type in OpenSSL s underscore client dash connect linkedin.com so that's the server and then port 443 because this is an https connection so port 443 all right so we see quite a bit of information here about the connection but what we're looking for is the cipher suite so you can see here at the top and here at the bottom and the cipher suite is not just a single algorithm but is a set of algorithms let's break this name down and understand what makes a cipher suite let me just copy this, this name and then we're going to go to cyphersuite.info and we're going to paste the cipher here in the search field. This is our cipher and it says it's recommended, which is good. Let's click here. As you can see here at the top, this is the IANA name for the cipher and this is the OpenSSL name. Below OpenSSL, we have GNU TLS name. And also we have an hexadecimal code for, for the cipher. And then finally here is the version of TLS that the cipher is used with. Now here at the bottom, we have the important information about the cipher. Cypher suites define five important things. The protocol that the client and the server are going to use to communicate. The key exchange algorithm. Remember when I mentioned that the server and the client agrees on a symmetric key. So basically they're going to get to that symmetric key through the key exchange algorithm, which in this case is the elliptic curve, Diffie Hellman ephemeral. Then we have the authentication. So how does the client know that it's actually talking to the right server? And in this, in this cipher suite, they're going to use RSA. Then we have the encryption algorithm that is going to be used to encrypt the data. And if the cipher is used, the client and the server would use AES 128 in Galloway counter mode or GCM. And GCM here is just the mode of operation for the cipher. And each cipher, they actually have different mode of operation. So for AES 128, you have a GCM or CBC or CFB1, etc. And finally, we have the hash, which is used to verify the integrity of the data. 
Before I explain how the client and the server agree on a cipher suite, let me just show you the different mode of operations for different ciphers. I'm gonna use the OpenSSL command again to check the name of the ciphers. These are the ciphers that you can use with OpenSSL. So here you can see CBC, so this is the mode of operation. And we also have GCM, so here on the right. And we've got ECB, etc. So these are all the mode of operations for the, for the ciphers. Now, how does the client agree with the server which cipher suite is gonna be used? Basically, the client sends to the server a list of cipher suites that it supports. And the server also has its own list of cipher suites that it supports. And then what's gonna happen is that the server is gonna check all of the cipher suites that the client supports and it's gonna pick one. So let's see an example. First, I'm gonna list all of the ciphers that the OpenSSL client supports. I'm gonna type in OpenSSL ciphers and then quotes all colon E null. There's actually a better way to see this. So let me do here pipe tr colon slash n. All right, this looks much better. So these are all the ciphers that uh, my client OpenSSL can support. And now let's check which ciphers LinkedIn.com supports. And for that, I'm gonna use nmap. So nmap dash dash script and then SSL enum ciphers dash p for the port. So four for three and then the server LinkedIn.com. It's gonna take a couple of seconds. All right, so these are the cipher suites that LinkedIn.com supports. And if I'm not mistaken, this is actually in order, which means that the top cipher suite is the one that the server prefers the most. And you also see that for each one of these cipher suites, they have a grade. And for, for LinkedIn, for all of the cipher suites that they offer, they are all grade A, which is very good. And the way Nmap gives grades to a cipher suites it takes a look at the key exchange algorithm and the encryption algorithm. Based on these two algorithms, it gives the grade to the cipher suite. And if you want to see a server that offers weak cipher suites, let's take a look at facebook.com. So let me run the same thing again, but for facebook.com. Now you see a different output. The ciphers at the bottom, they're actually grade C, which means that they're weak ciphers. And the, the reason that they are weak ciphers is because these ciphers use algorithms for encryption, which are not secure anymore. So for example, we have triple dash, RC4. So these are all algorithms that nowadays they're not considered secure anymore. And here at the bottom, we have a couple of warnings. So the first one says that Facebook is potentially vulnerable to the Suite 32 attack because there is a cipher suite that uses triple dash. And the second warning says that RC4 is a broken cipher. So that's why the cipher suite that uses RC4 is considered a weak cipher. But you don't have to worry because these cipher suites, they're actually low priority in this list. If you take a look at the cipher suites before C, we actually have around 14 cipher suites, which are grade A. And they, are, and they have the highest priority. So as long as you're using a modern client to connect to facebook.com, you're probably gonna be using one of these 14 grade A cipher suites. Now, the last thing I want to show you is how you can run an in-depth analysis on your web servers. And for that, we're going to use a tool called test SSL because I don't have this tool installed on my system. So I'm just going to use Docker. And the name of the username in Docker Hub is drwetter slash test SSL dot sh. And then I just need to specify the name of this, the web server. So in this case, linkedin.com. Let's wait for this. Okay, it's done. Let's go back to the top of the output so we can see all the information. All right, so the first thing here is the testing protocol. So we see that SSL v2, SSL v3, TLS 1, TLS 1.1, they're not offered, which is good. And the only protocol that LinkedIn.com can communicate over is TLS 1.2. Next, we have the testing cipher categories. And we see that no ciphers, which means no encryption, is not being offered, or anonymous no ciphers, no authentication are not being offered. 
Triple Dash ciphers also not offered, but obsolete CBC ciphers like AES, they're being offered. That's why you see offered in yellow on the right. Then you have strong encryption with forward secrecy, they're being offered, which is great. Then after that, we have the testing server cipher preferences. So the server has an order of preferable ciphers and the negotiated protocol was TLS 1.2 and this is a cipher that it was negotiated. Then here we can see the cipher suites which are offered, which we've seen before. But what I like about this tool is that you can see the cipher suite name for OpenSSL and for IANA. It also shows the key exchange, the encryption, the hexadecimal code as well. And here we have some information about forward secrecy. So these are the cipher suites which are using forward secrecy. And also we can see the elliptic curves being offered. And here at the bottom we have more information about the server, about the SSL certificate. Then we can also see a list of vulnerabilities that this tool tests the web server against. And of course that this is just a short list because this tool is not a vulnerability scanning tool. But here you can see the popular vulnerabilities which came out a few years ago. And then in the next section, it does a few client simulations to check which protocol and cipher suite would be chosen in case you're using one of these clients here on the, on the left. But for example, for IE6 and IE8, there's no support and also for Java 6 and 7. But for all the other clients, a strong cipher suite was chosen. Now the last part is the rating, which seems to be experimental at this point. But here you have the protocol support grade, the key exchange rate, the cipher strength rate, the final score, and also the overall grade. And you can see that LinkedIn.com has a pretty good final score and overall grade. So anyways, I hope you found this tool as interesting as I did. And you can use this tool to check the strength of the connection that your web servers offer. I guess at this point you have a better understanding of how Cypher Suites work, but if you still have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me on LinkedIn or just leave a comment below here in the video on YouTube, and I'll get back to you as quickly as possible. I hope this video was useful for you, and I'll see you in the next one.